Hello YouTube. Today we're going to be talking about the method of joints um, in static equilibrium when doing uh, truss analysis. Um, so when a system is in equilibrium for using the method of joints, um, pretty much what you're going to do is you're going to show that each joint must be equilibrium, hence the, the name method of joints. So there's going to be three assumptions you're going to make. Uh, first is that you assume the loads are all transmitted at those points, at the joints. The second thing you have to assume is that the joint um, has smooth pins, so we're not going to assume uh, that there's any friction. And uh, finally, for mostly like uh, 2D um, examples, uh, we're going to assume each truss member is a two-force member, which are just axial forces only, which meaning that there's only tension and compression in these beams here. Um, so the method I'm going to use here for this example is when uh, drawing the free body diagrams, all the um, external forces or internal forces will be in tension. So um, let's start off by summing, uh, drawing the free body diagram at joint B. Our object is to find the force, the internal forces of the uh, this beam here of these trusses, um, or this truss represented by beam AB and BC and AC. Um, so Let's draw the free body diagram. So you have the two uh, loads there, or not the loads, the um, beams. And what you're going to do is draw the external force we know is being pulled to the right um, at 500 newtons. And there is tension. We're going to assume that all these internal forces are in tension for calculation purposes. You'll see why. And um, from BA and BC. So we're just at that upper portion of the triangle right now. We're going to define our coordinate system as such. And simply what you do in all static equilibrium problems is you go some forces. Um, so you have the horizontal forces are equal to zero. So that would be 500 newtons. That's positive because it's in the positive x direction. Uh, plus the tensile force of TBC and the x component of that, um, which would be sine 45 in this case using our knowledge of trig. And that can be rewritten by solving for TBC, and we will get negative 707 newtons, 707. Now, what does that negative sign mean? Well, that negative sign simply means that the system at that point um, is in compression. So that means it's kind of being squeezed together rather than pulled apart. Next, F of Y, sum of forces in the vertical direction. We're going to have our... Uh, tensile force in BA um, and that's going downward so that's negative and then we're going to subtract that from the tensile force in BC but only the Y component of it um, and then that will give you the tensile force in BA which is 500 newtons I'm noticing here that sine and cosine probably should be switched, but since the degrees are the same, 45 degrees, um, you still get radical 2 over 2, so these, ca these numerical calculations are still correct. But notice how there's a positive sign for this uh, tensile force here. Well, that simply means is that the force there is in tension. That means when we drew our free body diagram shows that that is indeed a tensile force. Now let's sum forces. We have, to we have to examine each joint now. So let's look at joint C. So same thing, draw your free body diagram. We're on the bottom right corner now for joint C. We got the two beams there. We got each force there being represented by a tensile force. We calculated TBC to be negative 707 newtons. Um, we know now there's a reaction force here, um, only in the vertical direction. And we also have the tensile force in AC. So we're going to find our coordinate system and sum forces. By summing the force in the vertical direction, we know that uh, RC uh, is in the positive direction, but we also got to subtract the Y component of TBC. There you go, sine 45, and then you still then you get the reaction force is in fact 500 new newtons in the upward direction. Next, we'll sum forces in the X direction, and so we subtract the tensile force in beam AC and the X component in the tensile force of B, C, since they're all moving to the left, which is in the negative direction as we defined our system. And from those, that component, uh, we get the 
force to be 500 newtons. And notice how, both, uh, notice how this is positive as well, so this is indeed in tension. Okay, so now let's find, uh, let's for draw a free body diagram at joint A. So at joint A, we're going to draw our free body diagram. This will be more simplistic. Uh, now we have reaction forces in A, or in X and Y direction. Uh, we have our coordinate system defined as follows, and we're going to find, uh, find the tension forces in AB and AC. So we know the X reaction force is in the positive direction, and we also uh, drew our free body diagram such that the tension in AC is also positive. And simply they are the opposite. So since we already calculated TAC, uh, we know that AX, the reaction force, is negative 500 newtons. Next, we have some forces in the y direction, same thing. We have our y component and our ba component. Um, and then we know that's also negative 500 newtons, and therefore we got our values. Here's a summary. So I already put in the reaction forces, but this is just kind of a hollowed out uh, system here of our system, and we're going to plug in the values and show what they mean. So that this force TAB we calculated to be positive 500 newtons, so where it's in tension in that direction, um, at at that point there, we also got TAC, which is also in tension. And uh, notice how for these components that the vertical direction completely cancels out. So there's 500 newtons going upward, and there's negative 500 newtons going upward too, which would subtract to be zero, or which would add together to be zero. Same thing, if you look at the x direction, you got TAC moving at 500 newton, or at 500 newtons to the right, and then you have the reaction force at, a, at x is negative 500, add them together, you get zero. But we also have this um, 500 newtons over, up top there too, and this is in uh, compression, which is why we have 707 newtons. So that's kind of the overall summary here for this problem. I just thought we'd do a quick example on method of joints. Hope you found it helpful. Uh, it is long and a tedious process um, for finding um, all the forces in the beams, I mean, in each member. Um, and all you got to do is draw a free body diagram for each joint, hence the name method of joints.